Did you know the Olympus OM-1 was made in 1972? Well, here is my 1972 Olympus OM-1 fully mechanical film camera. Hello, my name is Adrian Verdusco, and I'm going to demonstrate on how to use a fully mechanical film camera, such as this one here, which is the OM-1 Olympus camera. Cameras have always amazed me ever since I was a kid. Um, from shooting an image to shooting landscape, pictures of the beach, or my favorite right now is portrait photography. Um, I mainly shoot black and white film stock. It, I feel like it's a lot more meaningful and when I look back at the photos, it's a lot more memorable as well. I'm going to break down multiple, three steps of how to use this film camera. The first step is going to be how to actually use it, what are the equipment you're gonna need. You're gonna need this right here, which is a light meter. Some cameras do have a built-in light meter, such as this one right here, which is really convenient. And it allows you to determine the light on what exposure you need, and also what aperture you need. Um, and also the shutter speed. So it's gonna be an aperture and shutter speed. Those are the two things that you're gonna to need to know with the film camera. Also, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use the settings. Usually in California, there's a thing called Sunny 16. That's a method they use. Um, and that's when you put the aperture all the way to 16, which is the highest stop on my camera here. You typically add a 250 shutter speed rate, so that's a good, a perfect amount of light into the photo. I'm also going to teach you the last step of the film camera, which is going to be the, the process and developing which you take it to a lab and they go ahead and process and develop the film so that you're able to actually view it on your phone and potentially share that share that memories. Step one, uh, the equipment that you're gonna need. You're gonna need this light meter right here. Uh, so this light meter determines the light on how much light you need. Basically, it's gonna, turn, it's gonna give you the settings. It's gonna give you the aperture and also the shutter speed that you need in order to make the, the photo look really clean and crispy. This camera does have an option of the light meter right on the top, so you just switch it on and it'll go ahead and tell you how much light you need in there. Um, that's for step one. For step two, you're going to need to know the settings and how to actually use the camera. So the first off, the setting is going to, the aperture is going to be 16, 8, 4, 2.8, and the lowest here it goes 1.8. So that's going to be the lowest aperture. So when you're shooting at 1.8, that means you're going to get a, you're going to be getting a really good close up, and with a very sharp focal length. So for aperture 16, it's going to be a wide focal length. Also, we have the shutter speed here. Typically, we shoot it at 250 because it's a perfect. It's a. So it's basically the shutter lens clicking in and out, and allowing the amount of light coming into the camera. So if we have it down to, let's say, 15 of a second, it's gonna be a very slow click. So it's gonna allow a lot of light in to be a very bright photo. So the last process of using this film camera and getting your crispy photo and a very nice photo to be memorable, to have a memorable moment and look back to look back at it with very good film grain. Um, so you're going to go ahead and take it to a lab. I take it to this place in San Gabriel called Formex Photos, and they, they do the process and developing photos. They do a great job. I get the photos back in about six hours. So since this is a film camera, you can't just send it to your phone right away. You will have to take out the film stock and go ahead and uh, take it to a lab where they do processing and developing film. Uh, it'll take however long. Use, the one I go to takes six hours. They'll process that film and then they'll send it to you through email or they'll send it to you through the app called WeTransfer. After that, you're going to do that final step of editing the photo and making it to look like how you want. Um, typically, I don't do too much editing because I try to, you know, get the, the, get the good quality out of the photo based on the settings and on the light outside. So I'm gonna run down basically what we went through during this presentation and the how to. So first of all, you're gonna need the equipment, a light meter to determine the light, because if you don't have that equipment, then the photo is gonna be very unpredictable. If you have something that would help you determine the light, it would be very much important. Also, 
the second step that I told about today was the settings. So you need to know how to use the settings in order to create a good camera or in order to create a good photo. If you do not know how to work the settings on this camera, unfortunately, the photo could come out very dark or very green and you won't be able to make out what you took a photo of. And then also that final step was you're gonna need to go ahead and take that film stock to a process and developing shop. Um, there's a lot of them. Um, so you can pick whichever one you want. Um, and I believe the importance for this presentation was because I really enjoy film photography. It's a really deep meaning to me and it's something that I'm going to school for and I have a passion for. Um, taking photos is more than just, you know, taking a picture and kind of forgetting about it. Um, I have a, a big album of photos that I look back at and I really appreciate the memories I had with, the, um, with this camera and many other cameras I have. Um, thank you so much and I hope